You know about, you write about e LTE, correct? Three major portions. Well, starts out slow by the second turn. You're just going around really fast. So what we're going to do, most likely when you have to do a hover auto, it's going to be when you have, uh, when you encounter LTE, whether it be from a malfunction, or a mechanical malfunction, or when you get into, due to some crosswinds. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do a, we're going to do a hovering auto to correct for LTE. So all you do here, say we, we start doing it, and you just... See how fast? I want to focus, do that again. Center the pedals. Now, this aircraft acts much differently when you have two people in fuel. Right now, just me. I'm doing this for training purposes once again. Don't, don't do this by yourself without someone that's has done it before. But um, I don't have much fuel on, on board. I'm here at the airport. So it's really important to realize the different characteristics when this aircraft is loaded at minimum weight or at max gross weight, 1370. So. All right, so we're going to start. We're going to do a little right pedal, and it's going to get bigger. See that? Do it one more time. I didn't, there's really not much of any pedal movement, okay? It's easier than a hovering auto in the sense because your pedal's already in. Let's do it again. And one, one note, the first rotation, I will not go around twice because by the time you go around twice, this aircraft is really picking up momentum and you're just asking for a, getting yourself into a, a dynamic rollover situation. So, there we go. See that? No one's around. Every area is clear. There we go. It gazes are green. Going around, picking up some speed. Look at that. Going around. I don't know about you, but... Uh, Remember, I cannot, do not do this by yourself or with an instructor that does not feel comfortable, okay? I don't let students do this. I demonstrate it, but do not do it. Or do not, I, do, I demonstrate this to students, but do not let them do it just simply because you're asking for a huge, <laughs> it's just not good. So go. So imagine you doing a left turn and then you whack something in your tail and it goes whoosh. That's it. Let's go call it a day. Doing a little sidestep practice here. Let's get right over that line, Michael. Right over that line. Coming on down. You want another practice, another, uh, you want some more practice? Try hovering, doing maneuver work, looking out the window. behind. A little slight pedal turn. Let's go down right over this line here. That ah, little off. I want to pick it back up. There we go. And that is that. All right, cool down for the R22, 75%. Governor comes off. This is where I turn my collective friction on, my cyclic friction on. 
And it's really important, uh, if people haven't stressed this to you before, I'm getting more and more uh, aware of it. I'm stressing it more and more throughout, all my, throughout the past years I've been instructing is in a proper warm-up and cool-down. Um, what you have is you have different metals in your engine that all expand at different rates. So if you are cold when you take off, like the cylinder head temp is not starting to get into the green, um, you have components expanding due to the heat, the combustion in the cylinders extremely fast. So you have uh, some parts expanding faster than others, so if you have a nice slow warm-up, um, that'll extend the life of the, the engine. The same thing with the cooling down. You don't, you don't want to shut this thing down and the temperature be 350, 400 degrees and dropping. You want, you're looking for a good stable drop before you shut down, meaning you want that cylinder head temp not to be falling still when you shut down. You want it to be stabilized and cool. Um, you know, depending on the day, you'll get it to cool down at, to different temperatures. But all the Robinson POH states is this uh, CHT, cylinder head temperature drop, CHT drop. Um, different flight schools, they teach you two minutes and 300 degrees. That did not come from Robinson. Um, but the biggest thing is for the cylinder head temperatures to stabilize before you pull that mixture. Which, you know, two minutes usually gives you an adequate cool down time. But, uh, you know, if, this is, if you own an aircraft or you're about to own one, um, you know, if you want to have it around for a while without having too many complications, do a good warm-up and cool down.